Hello and welcome back to Live and On Demand, the best channel for all your Boise State needs. Today we are covering spring break as well as student opinion. Stay tuned. You know, Daisy, I'm looking forward to it. The Treeford Music Festival in Boise is gearing up for its 12th year, tr promising a diverse and exciting lineup for 2024. Scheduled to take place from March 20th to March 24th, the festival is set to host more than 420 artists from 33 U.S. states and 22 different countries. This year's event will kick off in Juliet Davis Park, extending to multiple stages throughout downtown Boise. The lineup includes a wide range of performers with notable acts like A Place to Bury Strangers, Armand Hammer, Briston Maroney, Built to Spill, Solis, Chanel Tress, Down Coast, Moon Reservoir, and Ty Seagull, just to name a few. The vast array of artists showcases the festival's commitment to diverse musical genres and talents. Tree Fort isn't just about music, though. It also includes a variety of forts, or micro-festivals, encompassing different themes and activities. Ticket options include the Festival Pass, priced at $295, and the Zipline Pass for $420. Additionally, the festival is seeking volunteers who, in exchange for 15 hours of work, receive a five-day Festival Pass. This initiative underlines the community-driven spirit of Treefort. The event promises to be a dynamic and vibrant celebration of music, the arts, and community spirit in the heart of Boise. And now, let's get some more information about dining at Boise State. Being a student on the go, you're probably hungry. That's why Boise State offers over 15 places to dine on campus. My personal favorite place to visit on campus to go find something to eat has to be in the Student Union Building. Let's go check it out. It's so easy to grab a quick bite at Chick-fil-A order a healthy smoothie, or grab some delicious tacos from La Tapetia. To purchase these meals, you can buy a plan or you could tap to pay. A good tip to keep in mind is cash is not accepted, but no worries, you can easily convert your cash to a card in the sub. It's that easy. Food options don't stop at the Student Union Building. The Interactive Learning Center, also known as the ILC, offers options such as Pan Express, breakfast bagels, pizza, and even Greek food. For more information on where and when to visit different dining places on campus, visit boisestate.edu slash dining services. I am Daisy Bautista, and that is what to know about dining on campus. Hello, and welcome to Live and On Demand's weather report. You know, we're back here in the studio and I just wanna say that I'm looking forward to spring break and it's apparent that spring is here in Boise. Boise's finally seeing the sun and it's warming up here. Right now we're sitting at a comfortable 46 degrees with partly cloudy conditions. However, there are those wind gusts hitting up to 18 miles per hour. So if you are heading out today, make sure you bring a jacket with you. I know we saw some of those summer showers, or sorry, spring showers earlier in this week, but we only received less than an inch of precipitation. And as you can see, those precipitation clouds has moved from the Boise area over to this eastern corner of Idaho. So we are not expecting any more rainfall this week. Again, I know we're heading into spring break and I'm happy to say that as by the beginning of next week, we'll be in those low to mid 60 temperatures. I know we've been waiting for that long awaited sun. So everyone enjoy your spring break. I'm gonna head over to Carice and Alton with the latest sports news. Hi, thanks Delaney. There is no doubt when it comes to sports, specifically women's basketball, nobody is more on top of the world right now than Caitlin Clark. Iowa's Caitlin Clark has become the all-time leading scorer in college basketball history, men's or women's. She has brought immense viewership to college basketball and has the sports world in the palm of her hands. Her and her Hawkeyes also notably went on to win the Big Ten Championship. In professional basketball, the Las Vegas Aces have become the first WNBA team to sell out allotted season tickets. The WNBA also sold out their draft tickets in just under 15 minutes. The NCAA also made a controversial decision recently to eliminate the double contact violation in women's volleyball. On a more local note, the Boise State women's basketball team has advanced to the Mountain West semifinals. Head coach Gordy Presnell also earned his 750th career win in the first round of the Mountain West Championships. In this game, Abby Muse recorded the third triple-double in program history as number six Boise State rolled past number 11 Utah State with a final score of 85 to 49. Boise State gymnastics seniors Courtney Blackson, Emily Lopez, and sophomore Anna Ferguson each collected a Mountain West Specialist of the Week award following their performances in the Broncos quad meet in San Jose, California on March 10th. 
Blackson was named Bar Specialist of the Week for the first time this season after scoring a career-high 9.95 on the apparatus. She earned her second win of the season on bars and fourth in her career. This is the Elk Grove California Natives 15th career weekly conference honor. Way to represent athletics during Women History Month, ladies. Boise State's men's basketball team just completed their regular season last Friday as they secured a season sweep of the San Diego State Aztecs to clinch third in the Mountain West Tournament. The Broncos' first game in the tournament, though, will be on Thursday, March 14th, either against the New Mexico Lobos or the Air Force Falcons. The Broncos are 2-0 against both potential opponents this season. The Mountain West also announced their awards for the regular season in men's basketball as Boise State star forward Tyson Dagenhart was named to the All-Mountain West first team. While standout forward, Omar Stanley also earned a spot, this time on the second team. Guards Max Rice and Chibuzo Abo also received honorable mentions for their performances this season. The 2024 Formula One season has started, and the first two Grand Prix races have already concluded. The first in Bahrain was won by Red Bull's Max Verstappen, with teammate Sergio Perez coming in second and Ferrari's Carlos Sainz coming in third. The second Grand Prix in Saudi Arabia was again won by Verstappen, with Perez again placing second, but this time the other Ferrari driver, Charles Leclerc, placed third. In the team standings, Red Bull and Ferrari have already distanced themselves from the competition, with 87 points and 49 points respectively. The Australian Grand Prix is the next one up on the docket, and it's set to take place this coming weekend. Now, let's check in with Courtney and Georgia to see how they are feeling about graduation this year. I'm Georgia. And I'm Courtney. And today we're going to see how everybody feels about not graduating on the iconic blue turf. During the pandemic, they switched graduation to be on the blue turf, but now we're moving back into Extra Mile Arena. That's messed up. Let's see how the people feel. What's your name? Shay. Hi, Shay. Shay, would you rather graduate on the blue turf or an extra mile arena? Blue turf. For sure. Tell me why. Because it's the blue turf. Period. Yeah, that's all Simply you Simply put, period. I mean. Would you rather graduate on the blue turf or an extra mile arena? Blue turf. Why? Because it's blue. Probably the blue turf. I think blue turf. <laughs> and it like, it like represents Boise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> blue turf. And why? Because I'm on the dance team, so it'd be fun to like graduate on there. That's an excellent answer. Thank you. Let's go. Have a great day. <laughs> Blue turf. Why? It's outside. It's better space. Excellent. Hey there. What's your name? I'm Slate. Georgia. <laughs> Would you rather graduate on the Blue Turf or an Extra Mile Arena? Blue Turf. Tell me why. Because it's like significant. I don't know. Would you rather graduate on the blue turf or an extra mile arena? Uh, probably the blue turf. And why is that? It's kind of a, a landmark, I guess. So a lot cooler. Totally. True. Would you rather graduate in extra mile arena or on the blue turf? I have to say the blue turf. It's very I I iconic. Iconic. Any other reasons behind that? <sighs> no, no. Just uh, it's big and blue. It's big and <laughs> blue, <laughs> baby. baby. Let's go. There you have it. Everyone wants to be on that big blue turf. Thanks for watching, Man, Man on, on the, the Street. street. <laughs> Boise State University's production has received a significant budget reduction at the beginning of the spring 2024 semester. UTP is no longer receiving funding through special funding requests. These were used to maintain the television channel and staff productions for programs all over campus. As Boise State modernizes their budget, according to the university's website, their new budget model is set to correspond with the university's strategic plan. According to the director of UTP, Nathaniel Snyder, the program has served the university through these special funding requests for over a decade. Since the new provost, John Bo Bookwalker, was named at the end of the academic year in 2021, these special funding requests have been denied starting the semester. According to the Boise State newspaper, The Arbiter, Snyder was quoted saying, there used to be over $50,000 here that we have now used, that we have used for many years, and now that money is somewhere else. We don't have another way to generate the money for staff to help our students produce quality content for the university. UTP serves to teach students every aspect of the media world from production all the way to professional, professional negotiations. Snyder, along with his students, have expressed frustration about the budget reduction, yet they still remain motivated to serve the university as they have since 
the inception of the program. Let's check in with Jake at the rec to see how students feel about it. Hey everyone, I'm Jake Zom and today we're here at the Rec Center interviewing students on why they love the rec and why future students should come here and work out. Come inside. All right, and who are we here with? Uh, I'm Corbin Clifton. Sweet. Corbin, thanks for uh, taking your time to let us interview you. So I think my first question would be, what uh, do you like about the rec the most? Uh, I just like love all the equipment here. I love how they take care of everything okay. and like they keep everything nice and clean and I love that about it. It is always super nice and clean. That's something they do a great job of. If you were to tell a future BSU student one great thing about the recreation center, what would you say? Uh, I'd say we have a pretty awesome hot tub and aquatic center. Nice. Yeah. We'll have to check that out. All right, so who are we here with today? Riley. Riley, thanks for uh, taking your time to answer some questions. So I think my first question is, what do you like about the rec center? I like coming here with friends and I like the social aspect of it. Yeah. I brought my friend Maddie here. Does Maddie want to come into the shot? Come and say hi, Maddie. Hi guys, I'm Maddie. <laughs> Maddie, what do you like about the Boise State Rec Center? You know, it depends on the day, but I like the sauna. Sauna is a good answer. Well, uh, what were you here to work out today? Uh, legs. Legs, nice. Uh, what are you planning on working out? Uh, I'm trying to hit some chest and back. Chest and back, nice. What were you planning on working out today? Uh, today's back and biceps for me. Nice. All right, who are we here with? My name's Gracie. Gracie. And I'm Ashley. Ashley, nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you. All right, so what are we here to work out today? Um, we're actually going to a cycle class, and then we're going to hit arms after. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's for like a sister event, so we're just going to do it. Cool. Are you guys part of sorority here? Yeah. Oh, what sorority? Um, Alpha Sigma Alpha. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Sorry. Sorority. We're big sorority people over yeah. here, aren't we? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> There you have it folks, all of the students that were interviewed really like the rec center. If you've been questioning whether to go, you should give it a try. It's open from 6 to 11. My name is Jake and we're going to send it back to the studio. Let's just say it, housing in Boise is really rough. Trying to find an apartment is one of the most difficult tasks to navigate for a college student. Did you know that the average rate for an apartment in Boise is $1,600? That's an estate with a minimum wage of $7.25. If you're working 40 hours a week at minimum wage, you would only make about $1,200, and that's even before tax. With these insane rent prices, it is very difficult for Boise State students to find apartments. The difficulty even transfers to on-campus housing with an insane amount of applicants and not enough rooms to house them in. The housing waitlist has gotten longer and longer each year. Students on the waitlist who were hoping to get placed were then forced into temporary accommodations, leading them to tackle freshman year on top of finding a place. This year to combat that system, Boise State Housing has developed a housing lottery where residents apply and then have a random chance of being chosen to live on campus, then are placed on a waitlist if not chosen in the lottery. This new system rewards random chance rather than being the first applicant to apply. And that's not all. The system is even affecting families around the area as the massive influx of college students is pushing them further and further from the city. These college students have a larger buying power from their parents and being willing to room together, causing rent spikes and pushing families to rent further and further from the center of town. Rent being expensive clearly has a trickling impact on Boise as we know it and urge policymakers to push for solutions to the problem. Now, back to Courtney in the studio. Here at Boise State, we are just past the halfway point of the spring semester, which means it's almost spring break season, or should I say spring breakup season. The city of Miami has spent $250,000 on a campaign declaring that Miami Beach is breaking up with spring break. For years, Miami, Florida has been an extremely popular destination for college students' spring break trips. However, the rowdiness that this crowd brings to the city during this time has become extremely disruptive to local residents and the environment, such as public intoxication, drug abuse, violence, noise, and vandalism. Local authorities have implemented restrictions during spring break in response to concerns about public safety, unruly behavior, and the potential for large gatherings. For travelers choosing to reject this PSA, please expect curfews, bag checks for beach access, DUI checkpoints, limited parking with raised rates, arrests for drugs and violence, and more.
While Miami may not be the hot spring break spot anymore, other destinations such as Cabo San Lucas, San Diego, or Las Vegas may be a better fit for Broncos looking to have some fun in the sun on their week off. Hey, Georgia and Riley, what's happening in Boise over spring break? Well, let me tell you, Courtney, planning on staying in Boise over break? Georgia and I are here to share some fun things happening in town over break to keep you entertained. As Sebastian was talking about earlier in the show, Tree Fort is happening in Boise at the tail end of our spring break. There is going to be over 100 bands performing throughout the weekend with some local and non-local bands. Tree Fort has something for everyone with separate events such as Yoga Fort and Film Fort. Namaste. For our viewers over the age of 21, there are going to be several bar crawling events in downtown Boise in honor of St. Patrick's Day this weekend. Bars downtown will likely have cover charges, so be sure to pre-order your tickets online to save money. Another fun event happening alongside Tree Fort is the 26th annual Boise Flower and Garden Show. This event is the perfect kickoff to spring with everything you need to make your yard and garden beautiful. The show is happening from March 22nd to the 24th at the Boise Center. Interested in going to a hockey game? The Idaho Steelheads take on the Tulsa Oilers here in Boise on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Steelhead games are always a lot of fun and usually pretty cheap unless you buy tickets at the last minute. And last but not least, Joe Gatto from the show Impractical Jokers has a comedy show at the Morrison Center on Friday the 22nd. I do love Impractical Jokers. There are always fun events going on around Boise and there are several websites that show them. Make sure to check out your events website so that you can know before you go. Anyway, folks, that's all we have for this episode. Make sure to tune back in next time here at Live and On Demand. <laughs>